I'm Dr. Christopher Thompson from Brigham and Women's Hospital, where I am the Director of Endoscopy and co-director of the Center for Weight Management and Wellness. And I'd like to thank the course organizers for the opportunity to speak on novel procedures in endoluminal surgery. Here are my disclosures. Endoscopic, bariatric, and metabolic therapies, or EBMTs, can be broadly classified into two categories, gastric procedures or small bowel procedures. The gastric procedures include space occupying devices, including intragastric balloons, gastric remodeling, such as ESG, outlet obstruction, and aspiration therapy. And these primarily treat obesity with some secondary effects on comorbidities. These small bowel devices include sleeves, duodenal mucosal resurfacing, and anastomotic technologies. And these primarily have direct metabolic effects with some additional weight loss. As many of these procedures were already covered, I'm going to focus on novel gastric remodeling procedures and magnetic anastomosis, as these are the most endosurgical in nature. Gastric remodeling procedures can be further divided into those that try to replicate the vertical banded gastroplasty or gastric imbrication procedures. There have been many endoscopic procedures that have attempted to emulate the vertical banded gastroplasty. Here you see the original Fogel procedure published in 2008, which utilized a superficial suction-based suturing device to create a, uh, a sleeve along the lesser curve. And uh, this is a toga procedure, which utilized a stapler to, again, create a small sleeve along that lesser curve. Both of these did uh, produce good short-term weight loss, as high as 80% excess weight loss in um, those with lower initial BMIs in some of these uh, cases. However, long-term durability uh, was not there, and these uh, procedures didn't make it to market. There's a new device, again, trying to replicate the VB gene. This is called the EndoZip. This is a single center prospective series of 13 patients. One was lost to follow up. And uh, you can see here the procedure is pretty efficient. You can uh, average time of 35 to 120 minutes, no serious adverse events. And the percent total weight loss at one and three months was nine and 12, with an excess weight loss of 32 and uh, 42 at one and three months. So encouraging early results, uh, more to be seen there. Moving on to imbrication procedures. The original imbrication analog was uh, the trim procedure. And I worked on this together with Phil Schauer and Stacy Brathauer at the Cleveland Clinic. And um, you can see that uh, this procedure actually is very similar to the current ESG. We were just using a suction-based suturing device. Again, focusing on that greater curve, we were able to achieve a 30% excess weight loss in people with a BMI of 30 to 35. However, long-term durability again was not there. Uh, one year, most of the uh, applications had been disrupted or fallen out. Now we've already heard about ESG and how that solved many of the problems of those earlier imbrication procedures with good five-year durability. Uh, however, there's other devices on the way that uh, you know, will hopefully make this even uh, easier to perform. And here you can see a new type of suturing device here with a circular needle that is on the end of an endoscope and uh, there's many others on the way as well. So those all involve suturing. What about uh, plication. Well, this device is the incisionless operating platform and includes an operating endoscope that's 18 millimeters in outer diameter with four channels, two of which are about six millimeters in diameter. One accepts a scope and another, this tissue approximation device called the G-Prox. And then a helix is passed on one of the smaller channels and will acquire the tissue and pull it into this tissue approximation device and then a needle is fired depositing these snowshoe. This procedure was originally done focusing on the fundus. And you can see here how tissue is pulled into the jaws, um, a needle is, is passed through the tissue, and the needle is hollow, and those snowshoe anchors are de uh, deployed through that, one distally, and then as you remove the needle, one on the proximal side of the tissue. So the early results here, uh, we, were for, we were part of the first in man study in 2009, and uh, we got about a 27% excess weight loss. They then tripled the size of the device, and moved to Europe to study it and got over a 60% excess weight loss. And you can see here at one year, it's quite durable. It's an upper jet at one year. It looks, it looks um, you know, uh, rather snug. This procedure was then subject to a randomized sham controlled trial, a two to one randomization uh, with the procedure and lifestyle versus sham procedure and lifestyle. Inclusion criteria are listed and the co-primary endpoints here included a uh, difference in mean percent total body weight loss with a super superiority margin, as well as responder rate of at least 50% of patients getting greater than 5% total body weight loss. And you can see here, unfortunately, this um, was not a successful trial. There was about a 5% total body weight loss, and they this was statistically significant uh, when compared to sham. However, it did not meet the super superiority margin, and that's a rather low uh, percent total weight loss as well.
However, there's a new version of this procedure. It's called distal pose or pose 2.0. And uh, it uses a belt and suspenders uh, pattern. So you can see here, uh, the initial uh, set of plications are done in a belt configuration to reduce the width of the stomach. And then, um, then there are two rows of suspenders that are gonna be performed to reduce the length of the stomach. So those are, are placed longitudinally. You can do more than two rows, but this is kind of the general uh, uh, format of the procedure. And then here's our second row of suspenders. So the idea here is you can get substantial shortening with this technique. And this is more in keeping with ESG, which works primarily on the body of the stomach and really spares the fundus. So this new version of the procedure is really in keeping with something we know already gets pretty good five-year weight loss results. And then we finish it with a, a proximal belt as well. So again, same, same idea here. Um, so uh, three to four plications in the distal belt, three or four in each a row of suspenders and three and four at the top. And you see get a nice tight little sleeve here with this, uh, with this approach. So here's the uh, results of our first 10 patients. Uh, you can see there's a 15% total weight loss at six months. Uh, the excess weight loss, 37.9 and uh, 10, uh, all 10 patients are 100% achieved at least 5% total weight loss and 80% achieved at least 25% excess weight loss. And you can see uh, you know, patients across all BMI categories, class one, two, and three, uh, had successful outcomes, and there were no serious adverse events. This was also studied in Europe, uh, Gotran Lopez Nava publication here, over 70 patients. Again, all uh, BMI classes represented, and he saw a 17.8% total weight loss at 12 months and a seven point reduction in BMI. Of note, very interestingly here, uh, the larger the BMI, the greater the total weight loss. So you can see here about a 20% total weight loss in people with class three obesity and substantially less than that in class one obesity. Next, we have a similar plication procedure, uh, the endomena procedure. And this is a multi-center prospective series of 51 patients. You can see the baseline characteristics here is performed very similar to that USGI procedure where tissue is pulled into the device and you get this uh, needle passage with nice serosa to serosa opposition instead of our normal mucosa and mucosa opposition that we see with suturing. And uh, they showed a 7.4% total weight loss at one year, 29% excess weight loss. And uh, BMI reduction is 7.1 kilograms. Follow-up endoscopy did show good durable plications 87% uh, of the time. They followed this up with a multicenter randomized control trial. Uh, two to one randomization, 45 patients had the treatment and 21 had lifestyle therapy. And uh, uh, the uh, treatment group had a 38.6% excess weight loss versus a 13.4% excess weight loss in the control group. And this was statistically significant, meeting its endpoint. Uh, there was a higher uh, decrease in mean volume on satiety testing as seen here, 41 uh, versus 2.5%. Mean quality of life also improved in the treatment group and the 12 month Excess weight loss and total weight loss was 45.1% and 11.8% respectively. There were no serious adverse events. So encouraging early results for this new technology. And finally, we have enteral diversion with magnetic anastomosis. And you can see here, this procedure uh, uh, originally uh, required two endoscopes. And you can see one is passed from above going just beyond the ligament of trites and the second endoscope is passed just above the ileocecal valve. And uh, then once in position, fluoroscopy is used to um, observe deployment of the magnets and help assist with coupling. So you can see here, the magnets are passed through the channel, the endoscope assembled and then pushed together. So this results in a treatment path uh, between the uh, proximal dejunum and the ileum, as well as a preserved native path to mitigate against any potential complications. This has primarily hindgut mechanisms so this is a uh, pilot study. It was uh, a single center, single arm study of 10 patients. Three were pre-diabetic, four diabetic, and they were performed with laparoscopic supervision. You can see here uh, in the diabetic group, the um, HbA1c dropped from 7.8 down to 6, and in the pre-diabetic group dropped from 6.1 down to 5.2. So substantial improvement in A1c. 
Additionally, the weight loss was around 14% total weight loss. And this is all at three years. So this is good durable results. These form durable anastomoses. This procedure has been modified substantially since this original publication here. And they're now focusing on laparoscopic placement of the distal magnet. So more to come on that in the near future. In conclusion, endoscopic suturing and plication are proving to be effective and have an important role in the treatment of obesity. New technologies are making these procedures easier to perform and may provide better outcomes. Small bowel devices are on the horizon uh, with exciting things that come there, I think, and better studies and mechanism of action as well as combination therapies are now needed. Thank you for your attention.